and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. This time we're going to be renovating a piece of furniture um, so that um, it fits more with the aesthetic of a particular doll's house. I know a lot of people do this because obviously mass-produced furniture is great, it can be reasonably priced, but it's very much the same. So quite often people will make it over before they begin. However, I'm going to take a piece that I made over a good many years ago and I'm going to give it a new look. So that if you were to get something that somebody had made over before that you liked the look of the piece but you didn't like the finish you can see how you can actually um, do something else with it because just because one person's painted doesn't mean that it is the end. Now I've chosen the piece that I've chosen because I still like the piece I just don't like and have no um, use for it in the form that I gave it. Now the piece started off as a dark wood finish and it's a nice shaped piece but it never really worked for me in its original form and as my doll's house used to be it sort of evolved a bit anyway. Now the piece in question is a blanket box. I will bring it in. Now this blanket box is a little bit the worst for wear these days. One of the pieces of wire that acts as an in just come out but that is going to work in my favour because it means I can take the lid off. And you can see that it had got, maybe you can see, a little bit of the sort of dark reddy brown colour that it had in the first place. I'm going to make a new inch using either a piece of wire or a pin later on but for the moment this means that I can actually um, finish this off easier. I'm going to try and get the paintbrush in around things. Now I bought this piece, I'm not sure why, and I decided it was going to be a toy box in a little boy's room, which is why it got painted blue. And it got painted blue and it got yellow panels. Now these yellow panels, I'll just remove that, originally had some stickers on because it was supposed to be a small boy's room and I got some really cute stickers and I thought they're gonna be great. I think they were trucks or something like that, but kind of cartoony. Then I bought a doll for various reasons, but I bought a doll and it, the room became that little boy's room and he was a bit older. He wasn't a toddler anymore. He was sort of maybe eight or nine and I thought it's a bit babyish. So I used some of this um, sticky back um, plastic, which is in a five bar checker design. This is something that's normally done in um, metal. It's used in all kinds of um, sort of more industrial kind of um, usages, including on vehicles, particularly off-road vehicles. But I thought if I put that on there, it looks a bit more rugged. It looks like maybe somebody has tried to upgrade the um, toy box from a baby's toy box to one that's suitable for a slightly older child. Well obviously now this doesn't suit my house and as it stands I don't actually have any use for this in my doll's house but I thought it might be a good piece to actually give a bit of a makeover to and um, try something a bit different. Now actually I've had so many ideas that I could have done this week. I'm kind of fixating at the moment on 148 scale, but because I know that 148 scale isn't 
everybody's cup of tea. I try to break the videos up with the 112th and other things. And I've got it in my head that I want to do a winter scene. I don't know why, it's winter, it's cold. It's a bit warmer today than it has been, but it's cold. And um, yeah, I've been looking for something to do a winter scene in. And I found something and then I couldn't get the other things that I need, that I wanted to use in this scene. So that idea has gone out of the window for now. And um, I want to start a new room in my doll's house and I kind of know what I want to do, but I'm not there yet. So rather than just making um, more randomness, which is my usual go to when I can't decide what I want to do, I thought, I'd give a piece of furniture a bit of a makeover. So as you can see, this stuff, which was double-sided, well, not double-sided, it got sticky on it. So it, like, it, was like, it was like a sticker. Um, it's just plastic, but it did come off there and hopefully it's going to come off the top as well. Ugh. Now it's leaving a bit of glue behind, so I will give that a um, clean off. But that, I'm going to stick it back on itself and throw it in the bin. Don't get me wrong, I like the stuff. Now, it certainly looks like it might have been painted all blue. And then I decided on the add in the yellow. I didn't do a very good job at tidying it up. I don't know. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. So I'm going to start off by giving this a bit of a clean over. Now most of this glue, it seems, is going to rub off. So hopefully if I take a bit of time, um, I can actually get the residue of glue off the piece. And then we can actually look at it and I can explain what I want to do with it. I do have a bit of an idea and um, hopefully it will work. I have given the bits where the um, sticky plastic stuff was in place before um, a clean over and I've got rid of most of the um, glue residue. I've wiped it over um, with a um, cleaning wipe and there's still a little bit which I'll probably just sit here while I'm talking to you just rubbing it off but most of it is gone and I've also sort of wiped over all of it just to clean it up because there was, there was dust and dirt and such like on there but I think now that it's actually something that I can work with. So I'm going to explain. Oh, okay, that's what's happened. At some point, it's took a knock and it's become parted down there. So I think I will be inserting some glue down that little crack there at some point to try and um, get the piece back together explains why I've lost the pin. I hadn't noticed that. Literally, I've just noticed it as I'm talking to you. So, as I think I said, I haven't got really a place for this in my doll's house, but when have I ever let that stop me? So I was thinking about, and I was thinking that this would be perfect for one of those pieces of painted furniture where there'd be some kind of scene in that sort of panel. Now my painting skills are not up to painting a tiny little scene in that panel. I can manage some very basic things but it's been a long time since I've painted. I colour other people's pictures but I don't paint. So that was that one out actually painting it straight off but then i thought i could do it and do the faux kind of painting with a bit of a decoupage look 
Now you could, if you've got something suitable, use an image from um, either tissue, printed tissue or a napkin that are designed for decoupage. And decoupage is basically sticking bits of paper onto something else, um, which would work. But I want something a bit more um, definite. You know, I don't just want like a flower or something like that. So I got to thinking and I've been through my photos and I have found a photo that I am going to, um, res well, that I have already resized. I got my little ruler out and I measured the size of my panel and also the top panel and I've resized the photo to suit both. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to put it on both or if I will do something different with the top. If the top was flat, which it isn't because it's got this nice bit of um, a chamfered edge, I would consider um, upholstering it. But because it's um, shaped, I may go with um, putting the picture on there as well. And so what I've done is I have resized the photo and I've printed it out in the two sizes and I put it here. Now it's a wintry photo because as I say, I've got um, a bit of a thing on winter at the moment and it's actually, um, as you can see, a photo of trees and a wintry sky. And because it's quite vague, I've been able to resize it to the two sizes because I've had to stretch it for the one. Well, I've had to stretch it for both of them, you know, sort of squeeze it down and stretch it out. But it, um, it still works because there is nothing in there that is too obviously distorted. If it had got a building, I did try one with a building, it didn't work properly. Um, but it gives me a nice sort of look and I think I can make it work. But I also printed it out as a better size so you could see. And I quite like the picture, even though it's not from this year, it's actually um, at least a year old, if not two. I can't remember. I did check the date. Anyway, beautiful wintry photo. And this is what I'm going to be using as my inspiration for this piece. So it's not going to be spooky. I could do the piece spooky, but as I say, I haven't got anywhere in mind to put it. So it seems kind of pointless doing it like that and it just sitting there. As if I do it like this, it can be used possibly in a piece that I've sort of got in mind to do or it might end up being a piece that I sell on at some point in the future I don't know but I'm going to go with that so I'll move that out of the way and we'll go back to my very blue and yellow box obviously the box needs that little repair doing now and I'm going to paint it now I'm going to start off by painting it black I'm not leaving it black I think I'm going to go with a gray color but I want to start with a black undercoat because I think I can get away with minimum painting by doing it with black. Um, if I go for a lighter, a white, or go straight with, in with a light grey, I think it's going to um, be more of a problem. So. I think it's going to be a black coat to start off with and then we'll put some um, paint over the top in a grey a gray shade, probably a light grey, not my lightest grey which is um, almost white but probably a nice light grey. Um, I don't know whether to leave the knob on there. I'm not sure why there's a handle because 
if I pop this sort of roughly back in place, I'm going to get roughly back in place because I'm not going to sit here and feed the inch back in. You see that it doesn't really do anything. I don't know. I might just leave it, but if I do, I might give that a slightly different finish to the rest of the box. I don't know. I'm sort of winging it a little bit. Obviously, I'm going to paint inside as well. I may leave inside painted black. I'm not sure. But um, I'm going to turn this into a very wintry blanket box stroke, toy chest stroke. The blanket box has had its base coat of black. Now, I actually gave it two coats because I find that two thin coats covers better than one thick coat. And I quite like it. I could live with it like this. It would need a um, top coat of some description, but I could live with it. But we're going further. Now, I have just put that back on just to make sure that it still worked. Always a good idea if you've got fittings to make and you've painted with them in place to make sure that they actually um, still fit. So the next stage is light grey. Um, I'm going to pay most attention to the um, bits that will show. I will put a thin coat on to this, although I've got my bit cut. And I think I could get away with it being left black underneath. Yeah, I don't think that's going to hurt. So I may just do the bits that aren't going to be um, aren't going to be seen. Um, I'm going to leave the inside black for now. So I'm going to be very careful around the edges. Um, simply because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the inside. I might just leave the inside plain black for now and then return to it in the future. But um, yeah, so back on with the paint. The only problem with doing this kind of project is there's a lot of painting and then a lot of drying time. And it does make it a little bit boring, um, which is why I don't bother sitting here and letting you watch me paint because who wants to watch paint dry? I know I don't. And um, I'm assuming you don't either and you don't really want me to be um, burbling along talking about whoever knows what while I'm painting because I would be so I'll be back once this has got some grey paint. The box is now mostly grey I've left the inside black as I say I will get to that at some point in the future when I decide exactly what I'm going to do with the piece I am quite happy with the grey. It has come out quite well. Now this grey goes on really, really pale. It looks almost white, but then it does dry greyer. And this is, again, two thin coats. Now, I'm happy with it. You might want a, um, a more uniform colour. That's fine. But for my sort of style, this little bit of um, shabbiness works. So I am going to, I think, add some silver to the knob just to um, make it look a bit different. But I'm going to attach my pictures. Now I've cut my pictures down with a craft knife and a um, ruler and they fit quite nicely. That one's a little bit small, but that's me with my ruler. But I've painted around the edges with, this, um, with the grey. And I think it actually looks quite well. And I'm going to attach this with some Mod Podge. Now, <sighs> Mod Podge can be a bit problematic with... Um, inkjet printing and this is inkjet printed i've printed it at home as long as you don't put too much on it normally doesn't run but 
it's best to be cautious. So I will be putting some on the back and putting it on there, but I will be checking on the bigger picture that I showed you earlier in the video, um, just to make sure that it's not going to um, run. Ideally, you do something that was laser printed just to make sure because Mod Podge is water-based. Um, but I haven't got access to a laser printer that easily at the moment. So um, I'm going to make do with what I've got. So I'm going to start off by sticking this one on the front and then we'll come back and I'll stick the one on the top. The panel is now in place on the front. And as I say, I checked on the um, extra one that I'd printed and it hasn't run. I checked it on the front and on the back and it didn't run. And um, I will be putting a layer of Mod Podge gently over the top once it's done, just to protect it, to stop it getting um, rubbed off. If you use something thinner, something more of a tissue um, weight, you do need to put a coat over the top pretty much straight away. It just helps smooth out the worst of any wrinkles. Um, some people also will then glue the object, put the tissue on and then um, glue over it. But I'm happy with that. I've also added the silver to the little knob bit. As I say, I don't know why it's there, but I've left it there and I've painted it because I didn't feel like filling a hole. So to do the top, which is here, I've got my picture, which fits and fits quite well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Mod Podge, which is matte Mod Podge, um, a good layer over the back. Now the advantage of going over this afterwards with a glue, well with another layer as a sealer rather, not as a glue, is that it will help any last little bits, corners etc that might peel up to stay in place. And all I've done is I've pushed it off there because then I can hopefully pick it up. Now I'm just going to move that back and I've now got a very wet um, bit of a sticker. Now this one is harder because it's going somewhere flat, not on somewhere that is quite so obvious. The other one was great because it went into sort of an inlaid section. It was really easy. And all I do is I just gently smooth it out a bit. Hopefully that's not too, no, that's not too bad at all. And I've got my um, artwork on the top and I've gone too far over. Of course I have. You know the advantages. I can pull it up a bit and put it back down as long as I do it fairly quickly. The Mod Podge has soaked into my paper because it's printer paper. And um, it gives me a certain amount of time to do this. And I am going to include this because it just shows you that you do sometimes have to um, fiddle and faff to get it looking good. but that is going to stick down. And as I say, when I put the, put the top coat on to seal it, it will um, hold it in place. Now, obviously using the Mod Podge, the top coat won't be perfectly smooth. And some people, that is a problem. You do get brush strokes in it, unless you're going to sand it down and redo it. Um, I ain't got time for that. So I just live with it. I just live with the fact that it looks a bit rough and ready, but it kind of goes with 
my entire aesthetic. So I'm going to see now about top coating it and, um, and I think it'll be a case of showing you the final object. It's actually taken me a little bit longer than I intended to finish this off. I came to put it together and at that point I realised that um, you can see some of the underneath of the lid and the bit at the back when it's um, put together. So I had to go back and I had to um, paint the underside of the lid but I'm still happy enough with that. As I say I've left the inside black because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that but um, yeah other than that it's worked quite well. To fix the inch first off I glued the back back in place so that it shouldn't um, come apart again and I used a piece of jewellery wire this is I think 24 gauge jewellery wire it's fairly sturdy but it's not too thick and I just fed that through and then cut it off and that seems to be working I haven't actually glued it in I sort of wedged it in with a bit of force but um yeah my painted blanket box which um, I like how it's come out I couldn't have got um, such a detailed image on there by painting so um, I'm really pleased obviously if you've got a box that's got uh, panels on the sides back whatever you could put images all round but um, yeah, I like very much how this has come out. If you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you have, even though it is sort of a little bit outside of my usual style, um, I hope you'll like, comment and subscribe. Maybe even ring that notification bell. I upload videos most weeks, usually on a Friday, but real life does sometimes get in the way so i never promise anything but until next time bye